My name is Juanita Jenkin. I'm an Occupational Health and Safety Inspector for the Ministry of Labor. My name is Craig Laurie. I'm an Infection Control Consultant with the Ministry of Labor. And today we're going to look at the types of things that we look for related to infection prevention and control during an inspection of a healthcare workplace. The Ministry of Labor inspects healthcare workplaces to ensure that they are in compliance with the Occupational Health and Safety Act. We also work with our partners in the healthcare field, such as the Regional Infection Control Networks or the Ontario Agency for Health Protection Promotion the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care. Upon entering a healthcare facility, the infection control measures that I'm looking for may include signage, passive or active screening, and alcohol-based hand rubs so that people entering the facility have an opportunity to clean their hands. When I arrive at a workplace to conduct an inspection, I want to meet with one of the management representatives and also a worker representative from the Health and Safety Committee. The reason that we're here today is we're going to be conducting a proactive inspection of your workplace. And because we're specifically looking at infection prevention control issues, so we also like to talk to the infection control practitioner at the workplace. Do you have a specific infection prevention and control manual? We do. We do. Right? It's important that employers take steps to protect their workers from infections um, by having certain measures and procedures developed in consultation with their joint health and safety committee. How often would you take a look at your measures and procedures and revise them? Infection control measures and procedures for workers should be reviewed and revised annually, or more often, in light of current practices. Are you aware of any um, occupational infections that have occurred amongst staff? If an employer learns that a worker is ill because of an exposure at a workplace, it's required that they report uh, within four days to the Ministry of Labor, but also to their Joint Health and Safety Committee and their trade union at their workplace. An infection happens, we scan our, our surveillance, we call it, and they get the information right away. Workers can protect themselves from infectious agents by doing a risk assessment, figuring out what the hazard is in their workplace, and then following routine practices and additional precautions. I wonder if you can describe some of the training that occurs with respect to infection control. In healthcare workplaces, all workers should receive training in infection prevention and control. So supplies uh, such as gloves or, or masks or facial protection are available to workers when they're Absolutely. Needed. For droplet spread infections, it's important that a worker take certain precautions to protect themselves, such as facial protection that will include a mask and something to protect their eyes. An N95 respirator is worn when there's a risk from airborne transmission. For workers that are required to wear N95 respirators, it's important that the employer has in place a written respiratory protection program, and it will include things such as the training on the donning and doffing of the respirator. It's also important that the respirator be fit tested. Sharp should be disposed of immediately after use in an appropriate puncture resistant container. The container should not be filled past the fill line. Safety engineered needles are required to be used now by Ontario's needle safety regulation when they're used in places such as long-term care facilities or hospitals. Food or drink should not be consumed in areas where there is a risk of contamination by infectious agents. A worker that has health and safety concerns at the workplace should bring their concerns up with their supervisor or their employer. Can you tell me if the housekeepers are included in the infection prevention control training that Everybody right? that works here. It's important for everybody at the workplace to follow safe work practices because in this way we can build a cultural safety at a workplace which is good for not only the workers but also the residents, the patients or anyone else that visits the workplace. We want to ensure that there is a good workplace health and safety culture where everyone is involved and informed. For more information please visit our website.